morning and welcome to SB Connect, where we connect to and educate for the world of work. This morning, we have Stevana Evans, council member of Adelanto, City of Adelanto, who is here to talk to us today about public service. She's gonna discuss how positions in the sector impact local government. She's gonna give us a description of local duties and assignments in her area and in her region, and also an inside look at current projects and the innovation going on in the city of Adelanto. Without further ado, I'm gonna hand over the mic to Stevana Evans. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited and honored to be able to speak with you guys today. Um, I'll start with a little bit about my background and what got me involved in uh, public service. I was, uh, am, right, your typical exennial. Um, wanted to do great things, but didn't really know how to do that. Uh, and so I found myself bouncing from job to job, trying to figure out what my goals and missions were in life. And uh, eventually I stumbled through a uh, situation with my family and a daughter that passed away. Through that, we were thrusted into uh, a CFS investigation and fight. And through that, I found my passion and love for social justice and activism. So I started working with organizations like Color of Change, which is the number one social justice organization in the United States and uh, really loved it. I loved what we were doing. I loved the events. I loved the protesting. I loved all of those things. But I started to realize that if I really wanted to be the change, if we really wanted to make change in our community, then we had to be willing to sit in the seats of the people that get to make those decisions. Because if we're protesting and, and, and campaigning and all of those things, and lobbying to people that don't really care what we're talking about, nothing will ever change. And so uh, with a shoestring budget of $4,000 and a team of myself and two others, we ran for city council here in my city. We won the seat and I thought the rest would be history, right? Like, great, we get to be the change now. Um, if I'm being honest, politics are, are a lot more difficult than they look on the outside, you know, and we do a lot of um, judging and, and, and so uh, I found myself, um, you know, in, in a political space that I had no um, education on. There's no training for, uh, well, there are now. Emerge is a great program for women that want to get involved in politics, but I didn't have any training. And so I, I got, came on board, started making decisions for the city, and you kind of learn as you go um, along the way. So I've been in office. I was elected in 2018, backed up a little bit, um, and we've done some great things in the city. There's been some things that we still need to change. And then there's also things that I've personally taken on and battled to um, help impact my community. So some of the things that I've done personally and that I fought for and were the and initiated were um, getting a discriminatory a discriminatory housing ordinance off of our books. It's something called crime free housing. A lot of cities have it. Um, it sounds great, right? We don't want crime in our multi unit housing. The problem is the ordinance is super discriminatory and it definitely targets um, lower income people, um, recently unincarcerated folks. And so it took me a year, but I finally convinced um, the council, myself and the ACLU had to come in and kind of give us a few threats to go ahead and remove that ordinance from the books. I think that's been one of my biggest feats um, as far as working with outside organizations to make real lasting change here in the community. After that, we were able to declare race in the public health crisis here in the city, which didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. I was super excited to have council come on board with that. But then we spent the next year, myself um, and community leaders and residents across the high desert, putting together an action plan to back up what um, that meant, right? Because when people say that something is a public health crisis, they typically move. We talk about COVID all the time and how that was declared a public health crisis. And then there was a whole lot of action put behind it. But we've got cities and states and counties declaring racism a public health crisis across the nation, but not many are putting action behind it. So I was super excited to work with the community to build an action plan that the council um, adopted as the framework on how we're going to combat racism here in the city. And so we are currently working with um, legal to work out some ordinances and some different things. We've broken it down into some pillars to, um, to get that accomplished. And so I'm excited about that. I'm bringing up my notes, guys, give me a second. Um, but that's the, big, the, big, the bigger picture and things that I've been able to accomplish. But a day in the life, what happens daily um, for elected officials and, and folks in the public service sector um, it kind of depends really day to day. Locally, we, we get a lot of grand openings and those kinds of things. So we get to go out, shake hands and kiss babies. Um, but then every other week we have council meetings. Those typically last anywhere from three to five hours. Um, and so those are a little bit deep, but that's where we get the work of the people done. And so I always tell folks, you can't do anything else, at least attend your city council meetings because 
these people, you know, we talk about politics on a grand scale and we talk about the, the president and all of that stuff. That's great. But locally, we're making decisions based on that affect your life directly every two weeks. We're talking about if your water bill is going to go up. We're talking about which roads we're going to pave or not pave. We're talking about what businesses are coming in or not coming in. And so for me, local politics are almost more important to the everyday person because we actually get to make those decisions, like I said, and you get to come and talk to us and, and all of those things were super approachable. In most cases, I know most council people that I've run into are super accessible to their residents. And so um, then you have days like today where I've got multiple events because you know you, you wanna get out and, and be with the people. And so um, some, some days are, are, a little, are a little tough. I will say just in all fairness, right? Because I wanna make sure that the young folks coming in, which is my goal, right? I, I actually just nominated uh, and got appointed a 21 year old planning commissioner. And so I'm super excited for him to get to understand the ropes and learn the ropes early on so that he can transition into council and maybe even the mayorship at a, early, at a faster rate than most people because politics, local politics specifically, have kind of been reserved for like the retired white male, right? If I'm being honest. Um, and so what I want to do is bring awareness to the fact that the, the younger folks, us, you know, um, Gen X, millennial, and all y'all folks that are coming up behind there um, have a lot to say. And, and it's important that we have a voice. And, you know, we talk about seats at tables and all that, but I'm about Shirley, Shirley Chisholm, who says, if they won't give you a seat, bring your folding chair, right? So you guys get to those tables, talk to your elected officials, find out what it is that they can do for you in your community. Um, I'm honored. That's always my favorite thing to go out to the high schools. We right here in Atalanta High School and, and talk to the youth and find out what they want, right? Because sometimes it's as simple as planting trees, right? Um, so you get to have that impact on your community because you're local. You get to, like I said, connect to your people, find out what they want. And if it's feasible, get it done. Currently, we're working on a water project, myself and a couple other agencies in the high desert, ELSOL and ICIJ, because we know that we have a water issue in Atalanta, but the city's not addressing it. And so I'm getting to partner with Pitzer College and a doctor from Loma Linda to help figure out what's going on with our water so that we can find feasible ways to fix it because residents need clean water. Everybody should have access to water. And so I'm excited to work on that initiative here as I'm rounding out my last year um, of this term. And so the days, I guess that was a long winded. I don't know if I answered the question. The days are different. Every day is a different day outside of your council meetings where you're just voting on different things. Um, but, but it's always impactful. You know, yesterday I got to go out and canvas the community um, to find out what they wanted to do about this apartment complex that's being proposed to the city. And so um, if, if you love connecting with people and if you love solving problems, local politics is the way to go. Just realize that it's a little slow, right? Um, I move fast. I talk fast. I do all things fast. And government doesn't typically move that quick. Um, so that is something you have to be prepared for. But I definitely, definitely, definitely would encourage young folks, um, middle school, high school, start getting involved with your, with, with your local elected officials, find mentors, find which one um, fits your personality, which council member um, seems to align with the way that you would vote on items, which council member um, cares about the same things that you care about, and then connect with them. And in most cases, they'd be more than happy to let you tag along to stuff. I bring people with me all the time. I'm actually taking uh, a young entrepreneur with me out to Vegas for a conference in August. And so I think, you know, it, it's, it just, you have to find your niche, right? We need everybody. All voices are important, no matter what party you're with or any of those things. None of that stuff matters um, when you're in local politics, right? Because at the end of the day, all that matters and all that should matter anywhere, if we're being serious, are the people that you serve. And so I am honored and blessed to be able to serve my community. Um, I do it to the most, to the fullest capacity. I'm also a mother of three. I, I think I said that. Um, and so it's, it's, it's harder. Yeah, I'm going to take back a little bit for for younger folks, right? I'm not going to say that it's easy being a 30, I'll be 38 in April, 38, so 37 year old elected official who also owns a business, who also has a nonprofit, who also has children, right? Um, I'm not retired, so I still have to work and provide for my family. Polit local election, local politics don't pay you that much, right? So you still got to get have an income coming in from somewhere. Um, but if you can balance that work, political life, um, it's definitely for all of us. It, we definitely need more voices. I love hearing from people, especially if they don't agree with what I'm saying, because it gives me another look. Okay, well, let me figure out how that works and explain to me why your way is better. And once we figure that out, there's got to be a compromise. 
And so uh, again, I'm honored and blessed to have been selected by my community to represent them. Um, I do my best to get their voice and be their voice because at the end of the day, yeah, I'm elected, but it's not just me. I speak for them. So that's what I got. Any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the, the schools out there are preparing questions for you. Um, and, and as yeah, they're starting to pour in now, um, but as they're preparing those questions, being that it is Black History Month, mm -hmm. um, I, I want to I want to know what message do you want to give current Black females aspiring to enter an elected position? What what do you want to leave with? We're needed. Um, I think that anybody that's that takes a real look at um, the trends in America specifically, and maybe even worldwide, but we'll speak local here, here in America, um, black women lead the charge, right? Um, and, I, and I think that we have, we're, we, also, we also carry a heavy load, right? And so it's, it's hard to um, say every, every black woman needs to get out there and get involved. I get it, right? We're single moms, we are you know, working moms, we're family women, if we're married, you know, we're still working and we gotta raise kids and we gotta do all these things, but our voices are so needed. And so I would say to any black woman, even considering getting involved in politics, do it because you're needed. Um, it's not gonna be easy because you have the stigma, right? I am always the angry black woman. Well, that's fine. I'm a woman, I'm black. And most times y'all make me mad, so I'm angry. And so, you know, it's, it's okay to have those titles as long as you know what you're doing is ethically and morally right. Get out there, be the change, um, show other black and brown girls that we can do it. Um, because for a long time, we've been suppressed into like, no, you stay over here in your corner, do your thing, stay in your lane, whatever. Mm -mm. Definitely, uh, again, our voices are needed. Our perspectives are needed. Our communities are growing. And, and, and as much as I would love for it not to be that way, uh, well, no, I, I like it. I'm just going to be real. Uh, we are the leaders of our community, right? It would be, you know, we, we get into Bible stuff. But if, if we're looking at the way the society is built right now, Black women are the leaders of the Black community. And so if we want to make change for the Black community, then we need to be willing to step out of our comfort zone, get in the limelight, take some of the shots, because that's what comes with it, and, uh, and, and do what's right for our people. Thank you for that response. Uh, you, yeah. you, you touched on morals, and I think that's um, a good segue into this next question. What lessons can you point to to encourage ethics and morals in politics? <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a great question. All I can <laughs> I don't know, because I've been trying that for the last three years. Um, I think that you just have to stay true to you, right? Um, I tell people all the time, oh, you've got contributions from cannabis, and you take contributions from here, and you take, yeah, and the conversation with every one of those checks that come in is just so you know you can't buy me, right? Um, if something that benefits you also benefits my residents, great. But if it doesn't benefit my residents, then we don't need to have a conversation. And so I think that you just have to stay morally grounded. You have to know that you know that you know um, what your morals and ethics and what you will not sway on. You know, uh, politics is a lot of compromise too, right? But you have to pick some pillars, you know, whatever, you, three, five, seven, whatever your pillars are that you will not sway on. I don't care. I'm, I'm definitely going to be transparent all day, every day. So whether you like my answer, or you don't, one of my pillars is being transparent, right? And so pick your pillars, stick to those pillars, and on other things where you're able to sway, as long as it doesn't mess with you ethically, then sway, right? Because you got to gain allies as well in politics. Um, but, but definitely stay true to you. It's hard um, because you're going to get folks that say, hey, well, what if we just no, right? Um, also have, for me, like what lit my fire, I know that I want to reform children and family services, right? So for me, I know that I can't risk my, my character, my reputation, my anything, that can hinder me from getting to that point, right? So whatever lights your fire in politics or whatever space you go into, keep your eye on that. And then that lets, for me, it's like, well, I can't even entertain that because that could look bad. Optics in politics, whether you did it or you didn't do it, whatever it looks like you did is what it is, right? So I can't even be affiliated with that because that may hinder me from hitting my goal. So that answers your question. Oh, great. That's, that's awesome. Uh, I know uh, students uh, these days oftentimes missed the battle of the optics and 
are, are so quick to, to jump in and out of social media without learning the lesson of what, how things are perceived. Yeah. So that brings us to the next question then. Talk about maybe one or two of some of the other worthy battles that you're fighting or have fought for the city of Adelanta. Um, you know, I think the one of the one of the biggest fights um, we we are not on top of that one yet is definitely the, the battle with Geo, um, which is the largest private prison company in the world. I think actually, definitely the nation. Um, they are here locally in our city um, right now. They have a detention center, and surrounding um, that, you know, AB thirty two when AB thirty two came out, and it, California said we weren't gonna we weren't going to contract with private prisons anymore. Um, they lost their detention, I mean, I'm sorry, they lost their correctional facility, but then it was a huge fight with myself and the residents and, and activists um, against the city to change the, um, to not let them expand. So what they want to do is take their detention center and expand into that other facility. And so we fought hard, we were unsuccessful. Um, it, was, it was disheartening um, because of the, the losses, you know, the, the life losses that they've had um, in their uh, facilities with the detention center. And for me, the, the million dollars that they give the city a year isn't worth any, not one life. And we've already lost seven. And so, um, that's probably been the biggest fight for me. Um, I've needed the most support in, in that, in getting the residents behind me and all that jazz. Um, that's, that's for sure the biggest. And then of course, infrastructure, right? The water that we're working on right now, praise God for Pitzer and, um, this doctor at Loma Linda, that we're able to, I'm able to actually get some people that can help me because I'm not a scientist. I will tell y'all right now, uh, I have a degree in business and that's it. Um, so I don't, I don't know how to test water and all that jazz, but I would gladly go out and collect samples and give it to them. And so um, I'm excited to finally have some partners alongside me with that to help um, find the solution because water is a basic human right. We should all have clean water. We shouldn't have to be buying bottles and, and barrels and all those things of water. So those are the biggest, the two biggest fights I think I've had. Um, as far as like currently what I'm doing currently. Thank you for that. And as we gear down our Q&A session, we have another question from a school in the Inland Empire. And they wanna know what's a good way to encourage students to participate in politics? Meet them where they are. Um, I think a lot of times we expect folks to come out of their comfort zone to do things politically, right? Um, and so I think that the, the best way is if you can get some sort of political action um, coalition on your campuses. Um, we here at Atalanto, they did a huge, it was a huge project um, for the flavored tobacco, right? And so they, they went out with their advisors. And so find, I guess, back up, find what your students are interested in. Our kids here in Atalanto High School had a, had a huge issue with the flavored tobacco actually being sold in our city to minors. And so they got some advisors together and I think the kids actually initiated it. So that's why I'm saying, find what they're, what they're excited about. You see them in the quad doing whatever. Yo guys, you wanna figure out how that works? And then that's how you, you know, go to them. Don't expect them to come to us, right? Because politics is boring a lot of times, right? I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's a whole lot of drama. You actually, we could probably have a reality show here in Atalanto, but for the most part, outside looking in, it's like politics are boring. I don't wanna get involved in that. So find what interests them right and then build around that like i said those kids in atlanta so they did like a three month um they were doing sting operations they were buying the stuff from liquor stores and then they presented to council they brought their presentation to council we had no choice but to listen one and a second to vote in favor of at doing what they said because in, in i think 11 or we have 11 i think we have 11 oh don't quote me on how many liquor stores we have a lot um seven of them were selling to minors okay well they've just proven to us that we have this problem are we going to change it or no? So I think that you you find, that's how you start. And then when they get to see the process, okay, this took three council meetings and we had to go back and then we had to do this and we had to do that. They get to see the process in its totality and then it lights a fire. And you're not going to catch them all because politics isn't for everybody. But you will, one, you've instilled, so, you've instilled social justice in them on whatever the issue is. You've shown them the way the process works to get in to get into and talk to their elected officials and how, the, the pro, again, the process works for moving um legislation locally right and so i think again the biggest thing though is meeting them where they are i'm excited this summer we're gonna actually be doing i'm don't tell nobody guys keep this a secret i'm gonna be doing some um council meetings from the park i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna post them i'm gonna do all the brown act stuff to be able to have those meetings in the park because people say they can't get to council okay no problem i'll come to you 
right? So it's it's about meeting folks where they are, no matter what age they are. Well, that's awesome. Those are some some great examples of of giving and and championing student voice. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm 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 really really behind that, especially for the high desert. So I think this would be a real good question to end on, um, to kind of take it one step uh, closer um, to, I think, um, the, the hitting point. What do you suggest students and educators should do to develop the skills uh, so students can develop their skills for public service? Ooh. Skills, skill. Where, skills. And I know the high desert, um, you know, mountain desert uh, career um, um, educators are are really, really into building those essential skills. What What do you suggest? That's a great question because I didn't have any when I started. Um, I would say um, you just got to be one willing to talk to people. I would. I wish that I had time to take a Toastmasters class, right? Because I say um a lot and I hear that they teach you not to do that. So I would say uh, public speaking for sure because that becomes your number one thing. You're always speaking somewhere. Um, I don't know, skills, uh, tough skin, be willing to take shots because that's what they're going to be throwing at you when, especially if you're going against the establishment, right? Whatever your establishment is, um, if you come in and you're going against the grain, there is going to be shots thrown. So make sure that you're able to deal with that. Um, public, uh, no, uh, I think there's political science classes go to college. Um, I don't know. I think uh, you just have to have a love for your community. It's, I don't know that it's a skill so much as it is a passion, right? Um, if you have a love for your community and you're willing to, to be the voice for your people, and your people, meaning all the residents of your of your city or wherever you're running for, um, you you can make it work, right? There there there's emerge for girls that want to get in. I don't know. That's a great question. Way to stump me, Dr. Richards. I appreciate you. Um, I don't. I don't know. I think public public speaking is number one because you're gonna speak a lot. Um, I actually am blessed to have uh, uh, somebody that writes my stuff, so I write it in my crazy language, and then I give it to him if we got something big to do, and then he gives it back to me, and then I just study that and re read what he said. Um, but yeah, public speaking, uh, having a thick skin, a support system. I know it's not a skill. Again, that's just something that's huge because there's there's gonna be like I said, people are going to love and hate you whether you are doing amazing work or you're doing uh, they should hate you if you're doing bad work, right? But um, for me, I have 36,000 residents. I have six folks that are very vocal about disliking me all the time, everywhere. Social media, they, they in my, my inbox on the phone, all the things, um, you know, you have to learn how to tune that stuff out. So I think personal development is big. That's a skill set for sure. Um, I read a lot of books and I know that high schoolers don't want to read, don't want to hear that. If I'm being honest, look, educators don't get mad at me. I audio a lot of the books. I don't actually read them. Um, so Audible is a great app for me. I, when I'm driving, I've got my Audible playing. Um, get some personal development books, right? Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a great one. It's not political, but it definitely teaches you about life skills. Um, if you're thinking about running back to the Black women, uh, Stacey Abrams' book, I think it's called Lead from the Front, um, is an amazing book to teach you about leadership. It works for everybody. Find some leadership books listen to them and then listen to them again and then enact because if you're not going to act on what the nuggets that have been dropped on you, it's a waste of your time. So um, yes, there's a skill, personal development. <laughs> Sorry. Amazing council member Evans, um, you, that was awesome. That was awesome. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna bring it to a close, but before I do, what do you wanna leave the students and the educators of the Inland Empire with? What message do you want to leave them? We need you. That's it and that's all, right? I, I truly believe that um, you have to be the change that you want to see. You'll see it. I say it all the time. I hear it. I, I post it all the time. You have to be willing to be the change that you want to see. So if you don't like something, you have to be willing to get in the trenches. Don't just complain on social media, right? All you young folks, don't be on IG complaining about it. What are you going to do about it, right? Um, if you're not willing to do something about it, then how do I say, it? be quiet, that's a respectful way, right? If you're not willing to get in the trenches and put in the work, then don't complain. And so we need you, your voices are so important. The, the, the impact that you can have on your community is so much larger than you even recognize. I promise you, I would have never thought that these high school kids would have come to us with a binder presentation ready to go and the council had to move. Your voices are important, whether you're old enough to vote or you're not. Numbers matter, find a group of folks, come together, Put a presentation together and go speak to your council members and, and then become council members when you're old enough. 
Council member, thank you so much for giving us a look into your world of into the world of public service. Uh, this has been amazing. Again, to you all around the Inland Empire who have joined this message, we thank you for joining us this morning. And you can actually find us on sbcalliance.org where you can check in on one of our next amazing sessions on how we connect to and educate for the world of work. Again, this concludes our session today. Again, thank you, Councilmember Evans. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, guys.